all of us have a love-hate relationship with JavaScript, mainly love to hate it. But if you want to use the modern web in any reasonably functional state, you have to accept it. No matter what you do, JavaScript is going to be required for a lot of websites, and that's just how it is. Someone's going to say, but Brody, you could just disable JavaScript and ignore all the websites that are completely broken, and the problem goes away. Sure, you could, but I don't want to break half the web just to disable JavaScript. So I don't think that's really a functional approach, and neither does the FSF. So for the past eight years, they've been working on a campaign known as the free JavaScript campaign. And the campaign is basically to encourage companies to not use non-free JavaScript. Now, unlike regular source code for an application running on your desktop, non-free JavaScript has a slightly different meaning. So when you open up a website, that JavaScript is going to be sent to your browser and you can actually look at it. So by default, JavaScript code is open source, even if it doesn't have an open source license. Non-free JavaScript is JavaScript that is being obfuscated to make it basically impossible to read, and also JavaScript that is being licensed in a way that is not using a free software compatible license. Now, obfuscation does make sense for improving performance, and like how the FSF doesn't hate binary files, it's not like obfuscation is inherently bad. If the code is obfuscated, but is still available with a free software license on somewhere like GitHub, GitLab, or Git Repo, anywhere like that, that would still be free JavaScript. But that is much easier said than done. Like with anything involving free software, it is going to take a lot of effort and a lot of time to get any companies to actually adopt what you're saying. So instead of just waiting around for companies to take action, instead of doing that, the FSF has actually made a couple of extensions. One of those extensions has existed for quite a while. That is known as GNU LibreJS. This basically is a plugin to help you identify if the JavaScript in your browser is free JavaScript. Basically, it is a JavaScript license identifier and only runs on a Firefox-based browser because Stallman likes IceCAD and all of that sort of stuff. I would like to see it on Chromium-based browsers, even though I personally wouldn't use it. Just having that as an option would be really nice. I guarantee there's probably like a, a third-party version of it that does go and do the exact same thing, though. Now, what that doesn't help with, though, is free JavaScript that is still violating your privacy. So you can have free JavaScript that is doing things like collecting geolocation information and things like that. So the FSF decided to start another project that addresses the concerns with the data collection inherent inside of JavaScript. That project is known as JShelter, or maybe it's known as JavaScript Restrictor. Uh, someone should probably go and update that. I guess they must have changed the name, but not updated this page or the, uh, the icon on the, uh, the extension itself. So I'm going to call it JShelter just because that's what the website calls it. Anyway, this is basically a sensible middle ground between no JavaScript and JavaScript that can collect any information at once. The aim of this project is to basically limit those harmful parts to limit things like browser fingerprinting. Now, if we look at the extension itself, one thing I will say is um, the theme looks kind of horrible, but that's fine. As long as it's functional, that's all that matters. So by default, there are four levels of protection, and it defaults to level two protection. This is a good default. Level one isn't really that restrictive, and it does disable some stuff or limit some stuff, but nothing really that important. Level three becomes incredibly annoying because it is going to prompt you every single time the web page makes an HTTP request. And if you've ever used a modern web page, YouTube, Facebook, Google, anything like that, it makes a lot of HTTP requests, and doing that every single time something happens is very, very annoying. Going over to the levels description will tell us what each level actually does. This is one of the other problems with the extension. It's very easy to leave the extension interface. This is actually going to take us over to the JavaScript restrictor website. So each of the levels are fairly self-explanatory. Zero is going to be all of the uh, the disabling disabled, I guess. 
But level two is going to do all of this stuff here. So with the geolocation API, it is only going to be accurate within a couple of kilometers. Not that if you go and like search for a specific location, that is only going to be accurate to a couple of kilometers. But if you go and say, where is my current location? That is. It'll go and spoof your hardware information. If you have any game pads or VR headsets plugged in, those will be disabled. And I'm not sure the reason for this, but it'll go and round each second to a tenth of a second rather than letting it go and collect all of the digits it normally has. I don't know what the purpose of that one is. The reason why you want to go and disable VR headsets and gamepads is having one of those plugged in is basically an extra data point to say this is this individual user. And if you want to go and check what each level actually does, it actually does come with a test page. So let's go over to that one. And as you can see, every possible thing that it does, it is going to include things in here for. So if you want to go and, I don't know, check the audio stuff that it's doing, you can go and do test audio and so on and so forth. This is a great way to test what each level is actually going to do. And is a really great way to test if you go and make a custom level. This will let you customize each of the individual properties. So if you want to protect against canvas fingerprinting and audio fingerprinting and WebGL, sorry, I mean WebGL fingerprinting. This is still um, beta software, uh, as you can probably tell from the weird formatting as well. You can go and do that. This can be useful in cases where websites are breaking, but you don't want to go and fully disable the plugin. Let's say, for example, you actually need to access the GamePad API, but whatever level you're on has it currently disabled. The only other thing worth mentioning is you can set a specific level for specific domains without having to actually go to that website. You can do that from this page right here, and then let's say we want uh, www.google.com to be uh, level 3 protection, and let's add that to the list. And you can do that with basically everything you want. I have noticed one annoying problem with this. A lot of websites out there use a Facebook tracking pixel. Basically, this is a web page on Facebook that has a single pixel on it that can be used to track the user. Now, usually this is being done in the background without the user knowing about this, and obviously that's a bad thing. But I've noticed that on some websites, Actually interacting with the web page is going to open up the tracking pixel page with the tracking ID stripped out instead of actually going and just blocking the page directly. As you can probably guess from the fact that I'm using Brave, unlike Libre.js, JShelter is actually available on Chromium-based browsers. So if we go to the install page, it is available on Firefox, Chrome, and also the Opera store. Now, Opera is a Chromium-based browser, so you could just go and use the Chromium store, but whatever. Uh, one problem with the, uh, the Firefox store, actually, is it doesn't link you to the English page. <laughs> I don't know why, but I'm guessing this is the native language of the author. Now, if you like the idea of Libre.js, or you just generally care about your privacy, it is by no means the only plugin you can go and use. So, obviously, we have things like uBlock Origin, the ad block, I guess content blocker that I run. It is incredibly powerful, and you can block basically any individual things you want. But another one worth looking at is known as NoScript. This basically lets you actively filter content based on the domain that it is coming from. So if you want to go and disable any of like the, the Facebook tracking, then you can go and disable that or go and disable any of the links coming from Google Analytics or things like that. Do keep in mind that things like this run the risk of breaking a website, so you will need to sit around and actually get that configured when it does do that. Most of the time it's going to be fine though. And when it comes to extensions like NoScript, NoScript is really, really well designed, and it should be because it's shipped with the Tor browser. Honestly, I think this is a really cool project. As I've said in the past before though, I am not the uh, the biggest hater of JavaScript. I've actually worked a, a JavaScript development job and I can say that my JavaScript code is absolutely disgusting. So I'm part of the problem. But I can absolutely respect any project that aims to improve your privacy without overly compromising basic usability. Because sure, at the end of the day, the best way to be secure from JavaScript is to have no JavaScript. But you really cannot use the modern web like that, so things like this, I think, are incredibly important. It does still need a lot of work, but that is exactly why I made this video. I looked on YouTube, and nobody 
I mean, literally nobody has talked about this. If there is a video, I cannot find it. So I'm going to make this video. I'm going to promote it. And if you guys want to go and work on the project or try it out and go leave some bug reports, go and do so. That would be awesome. So if you like this video and you want to support the channel and become one of these amazing people over here, please go check out my Patreon subscribers only bearer pay linked in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over T available basically anywhere. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robertson Plays where I live stream twice a week, upload about five or so YouTube shorts, and this channel is also available over on Odyssey. That's going to be it for me, and I'm out.